Hi, I'm Nigel Gardner and welcome to my channel. Today I'm talking about loop pedals. So for anyone looking to improve their skills on a loop pedal, I'd like to think I have some valuable tips here because I kind of feel like I have an insight into Ed Sheeran's mindset from when he started out early on in his career because I know he was a big fan of Foy Vance, a singer-songwriter that I loved to go and see whenever I could. I can see how Foy's performances directly influenced Ed Sheeran and the way he approached using a loop pedal in live situations. So let's check out this recording I made recently of Superstition by Stevie Wonder. This is me using just an acoustic guitar and a loop pedal. All right, so here's my acoustic with the microphone inside it. That's the loop. That's me pretending to have a hi-hat. I've got the microphone and the guitar picking up that sound of my voice. That's the only time I use my voice here. Boss octave pedal. I'm trying to create interest without really giving away what the song is. There's the chord, not too overpowering. And just different tones on the guitar. Okay, that's pretty much it. Then I'll play this little bit. I don't record this. I just want it to be something I can actually play. Otherwise you're just stood there watching someone doing nothing, you know. The song changes to the B section though, and that's here. I'll explain that in a second. When you first watch me play the song, uh, I loop with the guitar, hitting the guitar. As soon as that's ready, then I start making that chuk -chuk 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 sound, like the hi-hat sound. But because of course, in that particular instance, I couldn't get the guitar up quick enough. So the first loop is wasted because it takes me a little bit of time to get the guitar up and, by the, and now I can't press record because it's too late, I've missed that opportunity. So you're waiting a whole loop just to record again. These are the kind of things I think an audience can get bored with if you are not quick to get on with it. So this is exactly why you should practice. I think the most important thing to practice is the intros, how you're gonna set the song up. I've seen people spend two minutes just set, setting the song up and every time that loop comes back round, if something new is not being added or maybe taken away, people will get bored very quickly. So that's probably my main issue is like you can see it, you can't really hang around. You have to have a plan for every performance. Okay, so here's an example of me just playing a track and making sure that I'm constantly adding new things and not letting anything get boring. There is always that compromise you have to make because you have two channels and if you want to be able to bring the beat, if you want to be able to take the beat away and bring it back again, it can't be on the same channel as most of your loop stuff. It's a little tricky, I'll show you what I mean. So this is no diggity, here we go. So let's just jump into things that you kind of have to have. Um, uh, an acoustic guitar with a pickup inside it and ideally a microphone. It has to be decent enough that you can hit the guitar and you don't get this kind of, as if I just like hit this microphone. It's not a very nice sound. It needs to be an acoustic sound. So you, like when you're hitting a pickup, you're just you're just smashing straight into it and it's, it's just an awful sound really. So having some kind of microphone in the guitar means you can hit the wood of the guitar and then the microphone picks that sound up. It's just so much more pleasant to hear. I'm using a Boss 
RC30, I actually used to love my RC20, but it broke and I can't find them anymore to buy. The more modern Boss RC500, I actually didn't get on with. I found it just a little bit more complicated and it didn't just didn't suit the way that I liked using a loop pedal. Anyway, the other thing I'm using, obviously a tuner on the floor is crucial. I find if you ever have any feedback issues, a floor tuner is awesome because you, you, know, you stamp on it and it just cuts anything out for the audience so that there's no worries. The Boss Octave pedal, uh, I, I keep it really simple. It's got the option to have two octaves below, two octaves above. All I do is one octave below and that's it. Really simple. So Foy and Ed both use a microphone going into their loop pedal and they'll often use that to layer up vocal harmonies on a track, which is a great idea. I'll link to a couple of Foy's old videos here actually, which you can see the kind of stuff I'm talking about. It's pretty cool. All right guys, thanks so much for watching. And if you found this video useful, please like and consider subscribing. Until next time, happy looping.